Now, when we talk about finding a spouse, or we talk about, um, you know, I guess what, what, what we would know as dating, right? Often there's two terms that are, that are tossed to and fro, right? There's, there's dating and then there's courtship. And people kind of think, well, what's the difference? Are these things different? Are these just two terms for the same thing? Um, I mean, my understanding of how generally people use these terms is they think that dating is what the world does. You know, so dating is the whole boyfriend, girlfriend thing and it's what they do and it's like a marriage-like relationship. And then courtship is what, Christian, what, what Christians do. It's like the right way to do things and, and, and everyone has their different opinions on how that should be done. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's not really important what you call it. You know, whether you call it dating or whether you call it courtship or I don't know what other things, what other things do people call it besides dating and courtship? Do you guys know? I don't know, so, so you know, they're probably the two terms that people say. It doesn't really matter what you call it, right? Because what matters is how you actually do it. You know, whether, whether you call it dating or courtship is not matter. You can call it courtship, but if you're doing it the wrong way, it's still wrong. You know, whether you're calling it Christian courtship, if you're just following the world's practices of dating, then it's still wrong. And, you know, a, a, one thing to say as well is, you know, a, a lot has been preached and written and taught on this topic and rightly so, right? Because it's about marriage. And marriage is, is a very important topic. It's one of the main reasons why we were created, right? You know, we were created to have dominion over the earth. We were created to, to marry and be fruitful and multiply and have children. So it is one of the main reasons for our existence is to, to marry and have children. So rightly so, a lot has been said about how to find a spouse and, and taught about how to find a spouse. In the Bible, you read more about how to have a good marriage. You don't really read it. Uh, you have principles about how to, to re relate to one another, and those are the things we're going to cover over, cover over in the coming weeks. Um, so rightly so, there's a lot that has been preached and written on dating and marriage. And the reason why I tell you that is it means then that there are a lot of differing views and philosophies out there. You know, so if you were to just Google you know, dating and, 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 and courtship philosophies and methods, you're going to get, it's a jungle out there, right? You're going to get a flurry of different opinions and methods. So it's just good to keep that in mind because probably most of the stuff that you're going to read out there is not biblical. You know, it's not from the Bible and it's just taking the world's methods and the world's philosophies. So a good reminder is to uh, get back to the Word of God and make sure our philosophies and our methods and our views line up with the Word of God. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what you call it, whether you call it dating or courtship. It's more important what you're actually doing, uh, not what you call it. So what do I mean when I say dating or courtship? You know, what I mean by it, it what I mean by it is it's, it's getting to know a person for the purpose of marriage. That's what it is, right? You know, you're single, you want to get married, so now you're trying to get to know somebody in order to see whether or not you want to marry them or whether or not they want to marry you. So this means when you go about when you when you go about dating, start, it means you have to be ready for marriage, right? Because if the purpose of dating is to see whether or not you can marry this person, then then doesn't it make sense that when you start dating, you should already be ready for marriage? It's not something that oh, I, I want to do it in the future, but I'm going to start dating people now. No, you you, you start dating when you're ready to get married. Um, so it means you're ready to marry and now you're trying to find that life partner. Now the reason why I've just turned here to Romans 12, I just wanted to read these two verses for you, and they're very, very famous verses. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And I, I always stop there at, at, at that phrase because I, I, I'm always reminded that, you know, the, the things that we do for the Lord Jesus Christ are reasonable. You know, it says here that, you know, he's beseeching us by the mercies of God. I mean, God is merciful to us, but he's saying, you, you present your body wholly acceptable unto God, and it's reasonable that you do this. So, so when God expects things from you, when God commands you to do things, and you think it's a drag, and you think, oh, why do I have to do all these things? Hey, this is reasonable of God to expect this from you, and it's reasonable for you to want to do this for God, to want to, to, to serve God with your life. Um, it's, it shouldn't be a, a drag. It shouldn't be like you're doing God a favor. It's, it's uh, you owe this to God, even though we have, don't have to pay for our salvation. Um, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, 
But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the reason why today I just wanted to go to this verse, and like with anything that we learn from the Bible, you know, we often, when we, when we study out a topic, we need to put our preconceived ideas aside and we need to let the Bible determine what our positions are. And the Bible says here that we ought to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So it starts with what we believe, right? It starts with, with our mind and then that is going to transform us on the outside. So we need to uh, reset our preconceived ideas and external change, the things we do on the outside, it starts with an internal change, doesn't it? So this is what I'm hoping to do with this sermon uh, series is really just reset how we think about dating, how we think about courtship and hopefully bring it back in line with um, Bible principles. You know, Jesus said as well in Matthew 23, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. He said that to the Pharisees. So it's about cleaning first what's inside, renewing your mind first and then that will change how you behave. 